As you think about leadership today in your organization, in your household, um, in your community, do you see lots of motivation? Do you see lots of engagement? Do you see a lot of collective energy? Or do you see evidence of apathy, disengagement, disconnection? My sense is it's probably the latter, right? Um, out here in the woods of old Florida, teaching leadership, and Wes and I decided to, to let this be the setting for our fireside chats and our video blogs in the month of June. And I'm glad because it's really cleared me up a lot. It's really allowed me to dial in and, and, and I think get to the things that are probably on your mind and that you're facing day to day as you lead from the rooftop and, and, and create movements and try to move people to take action who don't necessarily want to move all the time. And so our theme this month are, you know, it's the challenge of human connection. Understanding your arena and that no one wins alone. And if you want to accomplish things bigger than yourself, if you want to leave deep trucks in this world, um, you've got to be good at human connections. You've got to be great at human connections. The most relevant person in the room, which is the person we're going to follow, is the person who can make the best human connections. Why? Because I've been telling you all month, we are primal creatures, right? We're emotional, we're meaning-seeking, um, we're social. You know, we, 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 we are still just as primal as we were 100,000 years ago. Uh, we're pissed off creatures. We're, we're, we're lacking trust more than at any point in our history. There's just been an erosion of trust uh, at an epic level at both institutional and community levels, right? So that's going on. And now there's a third component here, which, you know, is disengagement. My, it was Gallup did a poll not too long ago, and they showed that 85% of Americans are disengaged. And then another poll showed that Americans at work uh, say that they're disengaged 40% of the day. 40% of the day disengaged. Right. And this is really troubling when you think about it, because, uh, you know, another 40 percent number is Daniel Pink saying we spend 40 percent of our day trying to get people to take action. Right. So if they're disengaged 40 percent of the time, what the hell do you do with that? What do you do with 85 percent of the people in a workplace, including CEOs, saying that they're disengaged at work? I mean, what do you even do with that? How do you how do you begin to get people to take meaningful action? Right. If they say they're not engaged at the workplace, it's hard. And, you know, that may not be the reality for your organization, but I guarantee you it's the reality for prospects and clients and people that you have to deal with who you don't know that well. If you're doing Internet marketing, if you're using social media, right, the average person's attention span in this day and age, right, is ridiculously low. I'm going to talk about that in next week's theme, so you'll have to tune in for that. But it's really low, you know? So with this level of a disengagement, how do you move people to action? Well, the number one thing that's coming back from associate surveys and things like that when they ask people is motivation, purpose. They don't feel like there's a sense of purpose where they work. And I will tell you, as I travel around the country teaching leadership to entrepreneurs, small businesses, and large Fortune 100 companies, they're 100% right. Most of the senior leaders I come across today are woefully uninspiring. They've become so transactional, so self-absorbed, so isolated in their path that they've lost touch with the folks down there in the trenches doing the lifting, right? There's just no engagement, you know? And when you have that, when there's not that, you, you, that there's no rocket fuel, there's no moon launch, right? If you can't push, you know, the energy and the purpose down to the lowest possible level, no one is gonna follow you when the chips are down. They'll smile politely and they'll do what they have to do to keep their job, but as soon as another job comes along, they're gonna move on. As soon as another opportunity to distract them comes along, 
they're going to play Fortnite, right? It's just they're not engaged, right? And that's, that's a leader problem. People ask me all the time, what do we do with these millennials? Here's a clue. Friggin' lead them. Lead them, right? It's, it's, it's about, that. this is a leadership issue. Humans are the most meaning-seeking creatures on the planet. We crave meaning. Without meaning, we perish. Without identity, we perish. And I challenge you to look around, right? Look at the lack of purpose in our organizations today, you know? And so we've got to double down as leaders. My challenge to you right now, if you're watching this, I don't care if you're a mid-level leader in a steel company or a CEO of a Fortune 10 company, Right or an entrepreneur or a leader of a nonprofit or the head of a household, right? It's about inspiring people to take action. Rooftop leadership isn't just leadership by example. It's the willingness to climb that ladder up into the darkness when tracers are flying all around you and to be there because it's the right thing to do and to inspire people to want to climb those ladders even though they're afraid, even though they're reluctant. They look up there, they see you, and they go, okay, if Wes can do that, I can do that. That's leadership. And that's timeless leadership. And guess what? People are craving that today. People are hungry for an authentic leader who can talk about not only their past and where they've been and how they got scuffed up along the way, but what they're building that's bigger than them. And then challenging the people that work there to help me build this thing. Help me build this creative vision that's bigger than that one associate create a vision that's bigger than those multiple in-groups that are fighting each other for relevance or status or resources. That's leadership. And if you can create that kind of culture where people feel safe and people feel connected and like they're part of something bigger than themselves, hell, talk about the tracks you're leaving. People focus in on that. We can't look away from that. It's compelling. We want to follow people who have clarity who serve something bigger than themselves, right? And so if your disengagement is a problem in your organization, and it probably is, I would say the first place to look to is to your purpose, to your why. How clear is it? How well do you communicate it? And does it make it all the way down to that most junior associate? And does it fire them up, right? I can remember in ranger school when we would be out on nights like this walking through a swamp, and the really good patrol leaders well, the really crappy ones, we would do a, a halt. Everybody would take a knee, right? And my, my, my ranger buddies will remember this. And then the, the patrol leader would check his map in the middle while the rest of the people sat on a knee until they finally got so bored and sleepy they'd just lay down and go to sleep, right? And then everybody gets in trouble and the patrol leader gets a no-go. The really good patrol leaders were the ones who, they would do in a map check, they would make sure the assistant patrol leader went to each person and said, hey, we're just doing a map check right now. We're going to be picking up in five minutes. We're going to keep moving this way. Drink some water. Hang in there. You're doing good. And then go to the next person and do the same thing, right? And they would find out why they stopped, what the purpose was. And now they're engaged. Now they're dialed in. Guys, it's that simple. It's the same thing. We've stopped talking to our people when we're on the patrol. We just are down in the middle doing our thing, looking at our map. And we've completely forgotten about the people who make the organization run, right? If you want to lead from the rooftop, you've got to inspire your people, and then they won't be disengaged. You can learn more about how to do that in our tribe, Rooftop Leadership Mastery. All you got to do is go to rooftopleadership.com forward slash mastery. It is a very cool, eclectic group of people, former soldiers, warriors, rock and rollers, business leaders, nonprofit leaders, stay-at-home dads, all working to serve a purpose bigger than themselves, to leave tracks for about 50 bucks a month you can get better at your leadership and play a bigger game and have a deeper impact. Be a part of our tribe. It's awesome. And we'll be talking about things like how to have rocket fuel for that moon launch and to inspire those disengaged people who you need to lead. Thanks for what you do, and I'll see you on the rooftop.